Good morning and welcome to Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. This is Bev Herring and today we're going to talk about persistence. Is there a goal that you're pursuing? How badly do you really want it? Persistence is the key to success and often victory in our lives. What does the word of God say about persistence? In Revelation 2.2, Revelation 2.2 in the Message Bible, it says, I see what you've done, your hard work, hard, hard work, your refusal to quit. I know you can't stomach evil, that you weed out apostolic pretenders. I know your persistence, your courage in my cause that you never wear out. What does it take to be persistent? Have you had some really bad breaks in your life? Have you ever wondered if you can make it against all odds? Years and years ago now, we became friends with a massage therapist who was a terrific little gal. During the course of knowing Melissa, we learned, I learned actually about her background growing up in the backwoods of East Texas. She was the only daughter of a single mom who was in and out of psychiatric facilities. In the interim, she lived with her grandparents. When she was about five years old, she said she and her cousin, who was also five, watched as the church bus would go around town and pick up kids for church. She told me she wanted to get on that bus so bad she could taste it. And one day her chance arrived and they both went to church and got saved. She said the next year her cousin was in an accident and got killed, but she said, I knew exactly where he went. Later on, when she was about 14 years old, she got a call from her mother in the psychiatric ward telling her that she'd met a guy and she wasn't coming home. She said her mother told her, Missy, you're big enough to be on your own now. Unfortunately, her grandparents agreed. So at 14 years of age, she walked to the little diner in town and asked for a job. The owner said she could wash dishes and eat her meals there. She also went next door to one of these little drive up places that rent rooms, and for the next few years, she caught the bus to high school until she graduated. She said she'd sign her mother's name when necessary, but I have every idea. In that small town, the school knew her situation. When she graduated, she and a, another gal, cousin of hers, caught a bus to the big city, which I don't even remember what it was, and put themselves through massage school. I don't know what you might have in common with Melissa, but I can tell you this, hard times can help a person develop persistence. So here are seven keys to developing persistence in your life. Number one, believe in what you're doing. First and foremost, you must believe in what you're doing and why you're doing it. If you understand your God-given purpose, then self-belief and self-motivation is much easier but it's imperative that you are open to follow God's purpose for your life. There may be times when it's a day-by-day -day journey, but keep asking, seeking, and the door will be open for you. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Matthew 7, verses 7 and 8 say, Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks, receives, the one who seeks, finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be open. There may be times when you feel all alone while pursuing your dreams with persistence. Just remember, once you give your heart to Jesus, you'll never be alone again. Not only that, he'll help you figure out what to do and where to go next, just like he did Melissa. Isaiah 48, 17, 48, 17 is a great scripture to claim in the Message Bible. I am God, your God. Mm, I love that. I'm going to start over. I am God, your God, who teaches you how to live right and well. I show you what to do, where to go. Number two, know that you have the ability to succeed. Here are two great scriptures to this second key. Matthew 17:20 classic amplified Matthew 17:20 says he said to them because of the littleness of your faith that is your lack of firmly tr relying trust for truly i say to you if you have faith that is living like a grain of mustard seed 
You can say to this mountain, move from here to yonder place, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. I love that. Nothing will be impossible to you. That's a great scripture to personalize. Nothing will be impossible to Joy. Nothing will be impossible to Bruce. Nothing will be impossible to Gina. Mm. Mark 9, 23, another great scripture. Mark 9, 23, New International Reader's Version says, If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for the one who believes. Hallelujah. Everything is possible for the one who believes. And then I'm going to throw in a third one. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. The Amplified Bible I like too because it says I am sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Number three, keep your faith focused on your goal. Two things about faith. First, be constantly building your faith every day. Romans 10, 17, Romans 10, 17 tells us, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And second, don't underestimate the importance that exercising your faith works in the pursuit of your goals or the things God's called you to accomplish. In 2 Thessalonians 1.11, 111, New Living Translation, it says, So we keep on praying for you, asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call. May he give you the power to accomplish all the good things your faith prompts you to do. That's actually another great one to personalize. Let me throw somebody in here. So we keep on praying for Yolanda, asking God to enable Yolanda to live a life worthy of his call. May he give Yolanda the power to accomplish all the good things Yolanda's faith prompts her to do. You know, from this scripture, it's clear to me, really, that there will be challenges, obviously, along the way. But we are to keep the faith, keep praying, both of which allow us to be focused on our objectives. Number four, never look at the wind and the waves. You know, when we take our eyes off our goal and begin to look at all the circumstances, we can end up in deep water. In Matthew 14, verses 28 through 30, technically, it says, And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water, and he came toward Jesus. But when he perceived and felt the strong wind, he was frightened, and he began to sink, and he cried out, Lord, save me. We all know this story very well. But let's be sure that we apply it to our lives when we realize the circumstances around us are breaking our focus so that we can stay focused on the only one who can really bring us out of the circumstances that we're facing. Number five, realize that no, N-O, doesn't just mean N-O. It often means K-N-O-W. On our journey, there are going to be times when people tell us no simply because they don't know all the facts or else they would make a decision in our favor. Let me throw in another story about Melissa. At one point, she came over going, whoa, I am paying 27% interest rate on a credit card and I don't know what to do about it. Of course, she knew we taught debt-free, you know, principles. So we advised her to call the credit card company. Ask for a supervisor, help ask her to reduce the rate that she was paying, and then to keep up with who she was contacting so that she could continue to ask until someone, she found someone who didn't say N-O, but said K-N-O-W, yes, they could do that for her. The next time she was over, which was probably a few weeks later, Melissa told us that she now had a 9% interest rate. And we were about to praise the Lord, and she said, and it only took 46 calls. We were blown away by her persistence. But the message is this. Her persistence produced results, and if you want it bad enough, you'll be persistent. Going from an interest rate of 27% down to 9% is huge, but not impossible. Number six, encourage yourself. There are going to be times when there will 
well, you're going to need to encourage yourself because there's no one else around to do it. We often tell the story about David and his men returning from Z to Ziklag and finding it burned. In 1 Samuel 30, verse 6, it says, And David was greatly distressed, for this people spake of stoning him because of the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. The best way to encourage ourselves, particularly when we are all alone, is to recall all that God has done for us in the past. If you don't already have one, you need to make a notebook of all the incredible miracles that God's done in your life. Write them out. Keep it available to encourage yourself in your most holy faith when the enemy wants to tell you that God is not around or he doesn't care to help. And number seven, never give up or give in. When you feel like giving up, don't. The attack may be intense. The adversity may be more than you feel like you can even bear, but never give up. Here's what we know to be true. In Luke 18, 1, in the New Living Translation, it says you are to never give up, but rather pray about the next step you should take. It says, Parable of the Persistent Widow. One day, Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. I encourage you to read this account of Luke 8, in Luke 18 of the Persistent Widow. It's an amazing story, and it will really help you to, well, make your persistence stronger, I guarantee it. And one final thought. Your victory may be just around the bend or over the next hill. So keep your eye on the goal, not on the circumstances. Live one day at a time and be persistent. And I promise you, it will pay off. Hallelujah. Okay, today is another day. It's going to be a tremendous Thursday today. We know it's tremendous because we made up our mind that it is tremendous. We're going to go out there and conquer. So you just have a great and glorious Thursday. Join me tomorrow morning, and we'll have a fabulous Friday together too. And in the meantime, happy trails and keep thinking rich thoughts from the Word of God. We love you. We appreciate you. Bye-bye.